welcome to Hot Issues. This week, we are taking a look at the euro bond. What is it? Why do countries go for it? You know, what does it mean? What are its ramifications for the future and so on? That's what we're doing this week on Hot Issues. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome back to Hot Issues, and as I indicated from the beginning, this week we are taking a look at the Eurobond. We are told that uh, this is the fourth time we are going for the Eurobond. What is it? Why do we have to go for it? Or why don't we have to go for it? What are its ramifications for the future? And so on. And we are privileged to have with us somebody who knows his stuff. Um, he's an economist, he's been member of parliament, he's been deputy minister, he's been minister of state in charge of the economy, and he is Dr. Anthony Akwetose. So you're welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. So first of all, this euro bond, what is it? Thank you very much. Uh, let me try and make it simple. Um, a country has several ways, as it were, of meeting its expenditures. It can raise money from taxes, borrow locally or borrow abroad. When you hear about the euro bond, it's simply nothing but a country going outside of its economy to borrow. Well, and it doesn't, when you hear euro, it, it gives the impression it is in uh, euros. No. It's just the dollar is the international currency. So it's just Ghana went out of Ghana to borrow ab abroad to fill its uh, expenditure needs. It's that simple. But, but why euro bond? I think why is euro attached to it? Historically, the European market was more robust, and 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 it's it's, it's, it's sort of come with it. But uh, there's no special reason why it should be called euro bond. Just say that you're, you're borrowing abroad. But the market has taken the name, and it's nothing but a bond. But a lot of the huge financial institutions deal in Europe and even in Asia. So now you could have said the Asia bond because the same institutions are also over there. But when you go there, because the transaction usually ends up in London, that's where it's closed. Uh, and so uh, that, uh, people think it's, uh, well, people have come to associate it with the Euro bond, but really uh, there's nothing to it. The transaction happens in New York, uh, LA, all over the world, Asia, they all participate. But uh, the London financial market is sort of the hub of international, and you, I mean, as a consequence, you see that the, the interest rate is called London Interbank Borrowing Rate. Yes, London has become the uh, center for these international transactions. How different is this instrument from other instruments? Because obviously there are other instruments. Well, there are lots of financial instruments that, that uh, but this is a bond. A bond usually has a longer term tenure, but yeah, shorter term, you know, fixed deposits and so forth and so on. So uh, uh, the difference is really that it, it lengthens the maturity and therefore uh, it gives the countries uh, opportunity to pay over a longer period of time. So I, I think uh, it's just like any other bond. Government in Ghana, we have not issued a 10 year bond before. The maximum we try to do is a five year bond, but bonds are bond. Y you can think about it. The U.S. Treasury has a 10-year bond. It's no different. It's no different. Mm. The only difference is that the participation is more international. As well. It's really global. I mean, every investor anywhere in the world can, because of the uh, internet and so forth, they can tap into it. So mm. uh, you, you are exposed to more investors. Some, some of these other issues are limited to a certain class of financiers. But here, in, in this case, I think Stanchart was one of the leading banks. You know, Stanchard is all over the world, so uh, there's nothing to it. Well, wh why do we have to borrow from abroad? Is it not possible to borrow locally? Oh, of course it's possible, and we do it all the time. As we speak, we are doing it. The problem has been that, uh, uh, historically, we've tended to borrow short, uh, uh, and, and that doesn't help us. Uh, because if you borrow short, uh, 90 days, 180 days, to do long-term projects, uh, that's a mismatch. And we have not developed our markets to the point where it is normal here. We are getting there. So 
out of necessity, we've been forced to go outside. In fact, in this particular last one, the original intent was to borrow domestically. Mm -hmm. Then they realized that the interest rates were so huge. So the decision was to go and borrow partly outside. One, to look for a, a long-term maturity rate instead of the 90 days. And also to get rid of some of the short-term bills that we have on our books. I think close to 40% mm -hmm. of our debt domestically is short-term. So every 90 days, the government r rolls it over. That's very expensive. You know, if you think about the TB rate around 27%, every 90 days you have to roll over. So the thought was, look, let's go and get rid of some of this very expensive short-term debt because we really need money for long-term development projects. Mm -hmm. So if the market is right, it makes sense. You want the least cost long-term mature if the market is right. But why do we have to borrow given the, the, the quantum, the range of resources available to the country? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, we may have resources, but we are not, getting the, we are not optimizing the revenue. You, you talk about it. Our three biggest resources, gold, cocoa, we don't have value. And as long as you don't add value, the, the amount of money. In fact, as for cocoa, uh, sorry, gold, most people do. People get almost literally nothing from it except for the royalties. So when you see that gold exports are five billion, so what? Very little comes to that except for the royalties. So corporate taxes maybe. So we need to move towards adding uh, uh, value to our resources and industrialize. Otherwise, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be stuck. So it is a structural problem that we have to deal with. There's no reason why. Of course, the market uh, is sort of a bit against us in the sense that it's been developed outside and we have not taken steps to move towards uh, collecting. There's no reason why chocolate should not be made in Ivory Coast and Ghana. There's no reason why. But uh, the big players are there, and it's, it's you know this global world. They can squeeze you, and but we need to move towards that. I think. So ultimately, these bonds do not solve the structural fundamental problem. No, no, come. no. They, they, I take it as a temporary measure, and especially if they also must be focused, because you, you, it's not like it's free. You are going to have to pay for it. So. You need to have a plan of payment, such that, uh, I mean, if you borrowed, for example, on the capital market to do an atuabo, I wouldn't have any problem with it, because mm -hmm. the numbers are such that five years, you'll be able to generate enough revenue to pay it back. And it since it's long term, really, you borrow long to develop long. But we are borrowing long to, to do short term projects, and that mismatch will continue to hunt, hunt us until we change the fundamental structural problem. It is, it is said, for example, that uh, under Nkrumah, we use supplier's credit to finance some of our long-term development projects. Is that true? Yes. And how does that compare with this? I yes and no. Don't forget when Nkrumah came into it, fortunately, not all the money had been taken away. So Nkrumah found initially huge reserves. So he didn't have to borrow uh, that much. But over time, when those reserves ran out, then he had to go to things like U.S. Exxon, and in a sense, it's supplier's credit because it's a supplier from America, and therefore the loan must come from America and the supplier must come from America. Relatively speaking, I don't think it was that expensive. The world market has changed. If you are going to borrow abroad and you think your reserves are huge, the cost is down because your risk of defaulting are very low. Mm -hmm. That's so, in a sense, I, I don't think... I think Nkrumah's time is slightly different from us and um, uh, because of the starting point that we started with huge reserves so even if we were going to borrow there was very little risk and it, uh, until we ran out uh, but we ran out because he, the pace of development was also quite fast mm -hmm. for a small country at that time so supplies credit uh, it tends to be more expensive mm -hmm. because you are limited to one person or one institution and so they tend to be more expensive than the bigger market where they are competitors. So what are the terms associated with this supplier's credit? The terms? This euro bond. How, how long is it going to take I'm us told to pay? 15 what years, but the payments are uh, 13th, 14th, and 15th year. We'll finish paying in the 15th year. 
at an interest rate of 10.75. So we start paying from for the, the loan itself from yes. the 13th. So you, you can look at it this way. In the 13th year, we'd have to pay 333 million. The next so we're borrowing now to pay in 15 years' yes. time. And that is why it's so expensive. In fact, if nothing happens, uh, uh, at the minimum, you pay an interest cost of closely between 1.4 1.6 billion less on interest because 107.5 a year so you borrow 1 billion yes and at the end of 15 years you're paying 2 point something billion yes because the, uh, it, the interest will be a bit less than 1.6 because in the 13th 14th year the, the principal would have gone down but assuming the principal didn't come down and you just do a straightforward uh, extrapolation every year is 107.5 even if you say times 10 but in this case, we know it's more than times 10. That's 1.075 billion. So I, I say between 1.3 and 1.4 billion minimum we we'll have to pay as interest. Then in the 15th, by the 15th year, we we'll have paid off the whole prin uh, principal, starting with the 13th year. So the debt service starts from year one? Oh! Uh, because the year is not ended, we, may, we may pay one-fourth of the yearly amount, which is about 16 or something million. But next year, every six months, we'll pay 54 million. So we start paying the interest because right it, from now. It's been this best, yes. So you, you'd have held it even for two days. So you, you, you use the interest rates to calculate it on a daily basis. For the next three months, we'll have to pay something. Is all the money available to us from day one? Yes. All of it is available. Once the transaction is concluded, usually a day or two, it should hit your account. And since we have an account in London and it's done in London, a GIB, mm -hmm. uh, Bank of Ghana has accounts there. So that should have hit that account. I mean, I'll be surprised if, because it's expensive. So the, that's one advantage of, of, of borrowing on the market. You close, you get the money. Well, bank loan, uh, time, you know, things. So that's, it has that advantage. But, but this one, I'm afraid, uh, the structure is different. This is the first time we see that we also had to, not, we couldn't use a sovereign guarantee. World Bank gave us a partial risk guarantee. That is not very good. So, in a sense, they're saying that, look, we don't trust your sovereign rating. But well, it's not just us. They are telling the World Bank that we don't also, you know, trust your guarantee. The World Bank is supposed to have given us a guarantee of $400 million. Uh, insurance, yes. Yes. And in spite of that? Yes, and in spite of the fact that we have an IMF program. In fact, today on my way here, I hear Fish has downgraded as BB-. minus. So it's almost like junk bonds that they used to talk about. Yeah, Those this, are risky. This brings to question a certain comparison, and, and I'm going to ask you to do that sure. comparison. La Cote d'Ivoire also mm. went for a bond. Last year. Last year. Yes. And I uh, understand that it was around 5% interest. I believe, 6.3 or so. Okay, around 5%. When, when we got 8.12, 8 they got 6.3, so that's about 2%. So interest. how come the La Cote d'Ivoire... It's paying interest lower than ours. And not just for this bond, see, for the, even previous bonds. The fundamentals in La Côte d'Ivoire are different from ours, in spite well, of their history. They're just coming out of a war. Precisely. But growth is uh, estimated at almost 9%. Cocoa production has suddenly come up. they are back as leading cocoa producers. The investor confidence in La Côte d'Ivoire is completely different from us. So you pay a price if they perceive that you are risky. And look, but they they are going to have an election it's this on, year. It's only a perception. That, but the, it, that's what matters. The investors perceive that and they will go for it. Yeah, I mean, there's no guarantee that if you produce more cocoa, you earn more, no, more, more money. There's no guarantee. But see, once they attack that perception, they translate it to your ability to pay. That if I'm growing at 9%, my chances of paying are better than you growing at 3%. And they are willing to take that risk. They are having an election this month. Do you hear any negative signals directly? No. So the perception of our investors is that, and of course, it's been held by the French companies. They've gone there so big, they've brought everybody along. That's the perception. But everybody is praising us for a human rights record and so on. Like what you getting a bashing. But our fundamentals for its are rights. wrong. The macro fundamentals are wrong, in spite of our human rights record. So the human rights don't matter very much in the They do matter, market. but you know, m m money looks at the return eventually. Not the human rights. It's in a, in a certain way, but at the end, is a return. <laughs> Human rights matter to make sure, in a sense, that I can take my, 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 my money out. Yes, you'll look at it. Good governance. 
but at the end, it's the return that matters, really. I mean, no, no, no investor is charitable. There's a reason why they want to invest. I mean, is it? let me give you an example. In 2007, when we went to the market, the LIBOR, London Interbank Borrowing Rate, was 5.3. We got it at 8.5, which means that they are touching... That's 207. 207, which means that basically they are, they are, they are attaching a risk premium of 3%. That time, interest rates were very high because LIBOR was 5.3. Today, LIBOR is 0 0.5. So when they give you 10.75, the risk premium is 10.2. Very high. It says that, look, we don't trust that you can pay back. So please, if I'm going to hold it that long, the, uh, let me attach this huge. And so, unfortunately, as I said, we boxed ourselves into this corner because this decision to go to the market was made in November last year, if you recall, mm -hmm. to go for $1 billion. Then the decision was modified to go for 1.5 so that we can retire the one that's due in 2017. Unfortunately, uh, we, somebody described it as, you don't go and borrow at microfinance to pay up a, a, a regular commercial loan. That's what we are doing. See, because what we got in 2007 was 8.5. So you, you can't borrow at 10.75 to go and re retire one. At, so that doesn't help us. And in fact, the world IMF has advised Ghana not to do that. But the decision was made a year ago. And because it was part of the budget in a certain way, you know, half of it was going for capital pro uh, 500 million. So you boxed yourself in, and ideally, in an ideal, Angola pulled out. So it means that it is not crucial for their budget. We didn't plan for that. So we are stuck with it. Could, if, if it's just loans that we wanted, couldn't we get loans from elsewhere other than the open market? I mean, well, loans from governments, sovereign governments, and so on. But y y y There's a lot of that money around. Yes and no. Uh, if it were, we would have gotten it. See, w w look at Ask yourselves, wh where is the Chinese loan? Where is it at now? Yeah, but several factors went into... I, I know. Several see, factors. That is where Some the of data is. hinging on diplomacy. Precisely. Yeah. The market does not react that way. And uh, uh, you are not in a monopolistic situation. Mm -hmm. When you are in a monopolistic situation, there, uh, it could be very risky. Mm -hmm. Here, it's not only one person determined. It's several people say, look, we are willing to take this bet. So, uh, normally, it's better to go to the market. But the, the downside is that the market is also very cold. Cold in the sense that <laughs> if you joke, it to deal with you. It can just move very quickly. And But those are the risks. You, you, you use the word bet. Very interesting word. Yes. Is it about... It's a bet. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. Yes. With, with, with some probability. We are willing to gamble to l lend you 15 years because you are Ghana and because the World Bank has given several guarantee. Some people say, no, I'm not willing to. That's why not everybody... Now even those who are there are looking to when the chance comes. So, Shut more up. or less, we are in the gambling house. Well, borrowing, yes, if you want to put it that way, borrowing, there's uh, what I call uh, uh, intelligent borrowing, and there's unintelligent borrowing. I mean, it's just like, why should I go and borrow at microfinance at 4%? The bank is also gambling that I'll be able to pay. Nations normally don't default, so the risk is not as bad. But in this case, it depend on the perception on your risk, who will charge you? I mean, three years ago, yeah, 2013, we got it at 7.78. The following year, 14, we got it at 8.125. Our risk premium is going high. Now it's 10.75. In fact, the day that government pulled out, it was 11.14. And you can't run away from that perception unless you do something about it. Mm -hmm. So first thing we need to do is get our macro fundamentals right so that the perception of potential default is not as high. So we're going to take a short break now. And uh, when we come back, I'd like us to look at what we're going to use the loan for, what we're going to use the money for. Okay. Is it, is it, is it, is it that sensible? Is it that really that sensible? So short break. <laughs> Welcome back to Hot 
issues and we are looking at the Eurobond. This is the first time we've gone for the Eurobond and uh, we are very, very privileged to be talking to Dr. Anthony Akutu Osai. He's done it all before. He's an economist, been member of parliament, deputy minister of finance, minister of state in charge of finance, and now minority spokesperson on finance, I the suppose. Ranking member, yes. Ranking member on, on, on finance. Now, sir, Eurobond, this is the fourth time. Fourth time, yes. What do we borrow for? Uh, I mean, I'm talking about all the four. What do we borrow for? Well, I, I, let me go back to, to start with the 207. Basically, it was intended for energy and road projects, basically. At that time, th th those were uh, the things that, w one of the things that most people forget is that, you know, we, we replaced lots of bulbs. It was, and it saved us almost uh, 200 megawatts. Otherwise, anyway. So it, it depends. We, um, traditionally, the government has said that it is going to borrow for infrastructure. Um, that is this one, the fourth one. This fourth one, I'll, I'll, I'll be specific. There are three components. The first one, the first part was to retire the 2017 bond of 500. We've retired part of it. It was 750. I think we've retired about 220. So original intent was to retire the balance of 530. Otherwise, come next year, we'll still have to pay a bullet of 530. The second part was do infrastructure development up to five, uh, $470 million. And the third part was to retire domestic short-term debt if we had borrowed 1.5. Now, I think the decision to retire was not sensible in the sense that Borrowing at a higher rate to retire a, 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 a bond that was cheaper doesn't make sense. But unfortunately, the thing is now complicated. Because we couldn't get 1.5, it means that the government must reprioritize. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that they will not retire. So they left it 1 billion to do road projects and retire domestic debt. So half of it is to retire domestic debt. At best, you get half of it for the projects. But we are in October. I don't believe that there can be absorption of 500 million in three months. So some of it should be programmed for the next budget, which is coming next month. Mm -hmm. Because I, 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 I don't think the projects were not determined a priori. In fact, some of us are determined to ask the minister, now that you did not get what you want, come back and tell us exactly which project so that we, we can track them. Why? The example last year is not good. We borrowed one billion last year. My opinion, uh, I say my opinion is that from the Bank of Ghana data, all that money was absorbed by Bank of Ghana to retire the debt the government owes them. The government says otherwise, but it has not given us sufficient evidence to believe it. So I, I'm going to go to uh, stick with the information put out of the Bank of Ghana that all the complete, as soon as it's hit the account, Bank of Ghana says, I'm taking my money, you owe me so much. That is not good use. Because that was not the intent. Not to say that Bank of Ghana is not right for, <laughs> for because it was huge. Mm. It was huge. And so I think that, so we must ask the minister to come and tell us, look, this 470, these are the projects, and we cannot spend all this amount, so we are moving into the next year. As for the, uh, what they are going to do is lengthen, instead of having 90-day bills, now you are going to owe 13, 14, 15 years. But the cost is not cheap. But we're told that this bond was oversubscribed by 100%. How come that we didn't get all that we wanted? It, 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 may, it may sound crude, but I, I want to put it that way. Why do you want to be crude? Look, <laughs> when we, we went in 2007, it was oversubscribed by 400%. And it, it, in economics, the fact that something is oversubscribed does not mean that it's good. It means that the, the perception is that they can get more from you. Why do I say that? And when I say it's crude, it's not really crude, but it is real. If you go to Takwadi, a brother, a brother in Takwadi, they say, here they charge 200 cities. And those people who, 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 who go there hear that same facilities can be offered for 20 cities. Where do you think they're going to go? The one which charges 20 cities is cheaper. They want a higher return. You are willing to give 10.75. When Poland got 0.94, huh? 
So it is a matter of demand and supply. I can make more from Ghana's debt with all the risks. So I'm going there. So the oversubscription should not be an indication of, uh, 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 of, of the confidence of the... In fact, if it is, why is it that even with the World Bank guarantee for the first time, we are getting this rate? So uh, I, I think we should be serious. The yeah, fact but but I'm trying to establish the, the, the connect uh, between oversubscription and the fact that originally we wanted 1.5 and we got 1. No, we took 1, not that we got 1. Oh, we took 1. Yes, because it was too expensive. In fact, if we had taken 1.5, it would have been a higher rate. Mm -hmm. That's why we pulled out. It was 11.14. For 1.5. If, if we are taking it at that day. Mm -hmm. So government said, please, just relax. So it decided that, look, when the window opens, you can get down to 10.75, close. That's where we closed. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really a gamble. You see, it's a sophisticated gamble. That's how the, 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 the market is. When I say it's sophisticated, I mean, it's not just uh, any cha cha wear or plain spa. I mean, you know that this is your growth rate. They test your ability to pay, your track record. We and we're no waiting for, for the best opportunity in order to close. Yes, exactly. exactly. On both close. sides. You are and they are. Mm -hmm. And that's why we decided to, hey, 11.4, sorry, we won't go. But don't close it. See, and luckily, around that time, oil prices came down a bit. Mm -hmm. So we said, hey, maybe people may have better risk. But as we speak, there are some people who may have gotten in there who are, may also be looking for an opportunity to go out at a higher premium. Mm -hmm. Government can decide, look, can I buy you out? And instead of waiting for 15 years, they'll say, okay, uh, pay me 8% and I'll go out. So the, it's a continuous market, daily. Daily and uh, yes, it is a, a, a gamble, but sophisticated in the sense that it's a gamble based on based on some realities also. That if you are growing at three percent, your chance of paying are less than somebody growing at nine percent. It is it is possible that we'll spend close to half of what we got on infrastructural development. I don't believe, given my experience with the rate That's of why absorption, it is possible. No, it is possible, but I, I I don't believe so. It's October. It's just now coming. So we'll stretch it into the next budget. It, it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It makes sense that if... Because the projects were not brought to Parliament, if they were determined. So you're now going to sit down and say, maybe it is this road. And then priorities may change. One of them is that you have an emergency with VRA. You yeah. may decide that it, it may be wise as an infrastructure project to go and pay some... Uh, to, to avoid the cutoff. That's the 180 million yes. gas bill. You may decide to use, because the consequences of cutting off may be lost output. So now government must sit down and come quickly and say, look, this is a, 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 an emergency. We must reprioritize. I think it's fair. I think it's fair. What do we expect from this infrastructural development? It depends on which ones we do right. Uh, I mean, we always need... I think uh, uh, energy is uh, a number one priority, and right now uh, we are not doing well. We have fought it for three years, and we need to do something. And the energy problem is not a technical generation problem. It's a financial issue. The cost indebtedness among all the key parties, I don't know the quantum, but it's not small. But we cannot lose focus of that. I've heard estimates of uh, $530 million. For who? Quantum or no, 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 it is more than that. More than that. Via ECG alone, government may owe ECG that much. But I'm talking about VRE, Greco, Gre Gre Asogli, Ghana Gas. This internalness among them. It, as for ECG is high, uh, and I mean, if you add all the uh, pa energy and power companies, it's more than that. Could we be nearly in a billion? Oh, we, we are past a billion. Then we could think all that we are getting into energy and yes, nothing will be left. VRA alone, I am told, owes the local banking system $1.3 billion. VRA alone. Wow. You see, in 2007, when we, we did the divestiture, we had to spend $500 million to buy gas for VRA to produce. So I'm not surprised. That's why I think... Yeah, but if we spent all of that money, if we put all of that money into energy... How do we generate the kinds of jobs that we are talking about? Because one of the rationale mm -hmm. was, was to put it in, in, in uh, infrastructural development, 
which had the potential to generate a lot more jobs and quickly. Well, that, that, that is relative. It, it, it depends on what infrastructure project that will generate jobs. You see, for example, mechanizing agri may generate more jobs than trying to put a, a, a thermal plant. Thermal plant, the, the, the story is simple. We know what to do at what cost. But how many jobs does, does, does it generate? It could be that doing an irrigation may have better returns than that. Maybe take longer. But so Not even road construction. Road construction, yes. Depend on uh, but wh wh which roads and who is doing them. It makes a, a, a difference. Um, in the past, what I've noticed is that the foreign contractors, particularly the Chinese, have tended to be the ones that are getting. So that money doesn't stay here. But if local contractors were pulled together, we may generate more jobs than... So I, I, you have to really focus. So, sir, what's the difficulty in, in pulling local contractors together to do jobs here? There's no what's difficulty. the difficulty in, in expanding the capacity of local contractors? Because as it were, you go and borrow money at fantastic interest rates, you pay it to foreign contractors, and the money just leaves the economy. This is a, a matter that, uh, as I heard you say some time ago, I mean, there's a period where we developed local contractors. Why did we lose it? I think we should come back to it. It's not lost yet. We must. It's not a. Uh, we don't have a choice but to go there. If we think about, oh, these guys are good. Well, when are our people going to get good? In any case, uh, what's the guy from Win uh, Swedro? Swedro contractor. Yes, my good friend. Yeah. I mean, that's how he was built up, and he became. I mean, their roads are still working. So we've been there before. I think we need to revisit. You know, and I know a few ones. And especially in, in this time, this yes. day and age, yeah, I think where the technology is available on exactly. the market, anybody can pick up the technology. Uh, I, I think we need to you know. really go there and look at it carefully. Uh, mm. uh, because I think it's an area that we, we must do. Because otherwise we'll keep, as you said, taking the money out. Uh, yes, the Chinese have helped us. But that's why they, they, they sort of enticed us with three billion. Now, next time you know, only the Chinese will be doing, uh, uh, and, and now, of course, the uh, Israelis are there, but I think we need to develop local. And now the Brazilians are also in yes, the market. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So know, I, I think the, the, the Brits are in the market, yes. you know. So I think we, we need to revisit that, and, but it must be a conscious choice to subsidize, mm -hmm. because very few of them can have access to huge capital, but government must can on lend. And, I mean, it's no problem because it will be a conscious choice that we, we want to develop local capacity to generate local employment. That is okay. I don't have any problem with that. Well, I've heard the minority comment about the quantum of debts. How does this eurobond play <laughs> when it comes to the quantum of debt? Today, it has added close to 4 billion cities to our debt because it's been disbursed. That's how quickly it has to our debt. And that's why we start paying the interest. So this one, the day it hit our account, it means that we have added $1 billion or the equivalent of 3.7 billion cities to what existed before it came in. That's around $95 billion. So we are close to $98 billion. How, how is that a problem? Because, it, because if you're borrowing and if you're using what you're borrowing sensibly... If that ought to be a plus. No, I, I, that is the point. Mm -hmm. Some of us were against the Chinese loan because it, it was not sensible. But some parts of it were sensible. At all. Mm -hmm. I think it was a bit too expensive. But that notwithstanding, if in the five years you could pay it back, then just borrow 850 for that project. Not commit to $3 billion and pay commitment fees. So I don't have problem per se, unless we can generate internal resources to fill the gap. And so far, I don't know any country that does. Mm -hmm. So there'll be some necessity to do some borrowing. Mm -hmm. But you must make sure that I mean, even in education, even though it takes a, a long term, it's a, an investment in human capital. Mm -hmm. But you must make sure the product uh, is uh, efficient. And th there are things you must do. So it's not a borrowing per se. But why we keep cautioning is that we, we've been on this path. We, we came in 2000, we had borrowed so much. You see, how, it, how does it affect us? Right now, this year, we are going to pay $12 billion in, on service, servicing the loans. $12 billion, 
cities. The wage bill is 10 billion cities. That's 22 billion. If your total revenue is 30, what do you have for development? You don't want to. You haven't given your chance to develop. So then you are forced to go and borrow outside. But assuming just for, that you, you were spending only even 6 billion on, uh, on servicing the loan, you have 6 billion to actually do development. That is where the, the, your ability to pay, our growth rate is coming down. Think about it this way. But, but can, can we continue like this? No. <laughs> it's obvious that we are heading towards a dead end. That is why some of us are a bit worried that, look, aside from the politics, th there are real issues that we, we must look at mm -hmm. so that w all of us can be comfortable because we cannot overburden future generations with something that they, they can't even pay. So that's where the structural transformation must come in and, and we must monitor our things. I mean, really, whether uh, it's this government or that government, I mean, you, it, how do we build a road that costs one million dollars per kilometer, if not more? It's not done in the world. So we, as a nation, must see to it that it doesn't happen. We have consultants. Why are they making us pay all this money? This is a Ghanaian problem. So we, are we getting value for money for our projects? That's my worry. And we must begin to hold down. I don't continue. So. I, 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 I guess it must be obvious to everybody that we can continue this way. I hope it is. Well, Sometimes everybody talks about it. But, but it's not enough to talk about it. We must do something about it. We must what, what do we do about we it? Must we must come to a to consensus that, look, we all must agree that value for money is important for Ghanaians. And therefore, every project, we must scrutinize it like it were our own money. It's not easy, but our short-term nature, the short-term nature of our politics does not appear to be bringing us to a consensus. Because we can all agree that Atwabu is good, but we can also agree that uh, it is not good to, say, spend money on Sada and not get anything out of it. That, I think, is common sense. So if I see money being wasted, it should not be political. And we need to be moving in that direction, that the concept of Sada is good, but money has been misused. That yes, is but, but that's my worry. Is it possible to get there? I think so. Everything is being done on partisan political basis. I, I think... I mean, I look at Parliament. Uh -huh. I look at Parliament. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder how for four years the minority can decide that everything government does is bad. But that's not And true. how the majority can decide it is that everything that from the position is not worthy of consideration. It's bad, no. In fact, we see, check carefully, 90-95% of our decisions are by consensus. In the few 5%, that's controversial. The key ones? No, but yeah, it's only the, the, the ones about your remuneration and so on, we can no, understand. No, no, no. no. Even that, that's not even that. Don't forget, this year, we don't even have a commission yet <laughs> to determine that. That's another, another matter. But I'm talking about projects. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, let me give you a project. There was a World Bank loan that also dealt with sanitary parts. We're not against the loan, but the use of foreign money to do that Nobody could come to that, uh, convince me that it had more value than something else. That's why we should be able to agree to disagree. So, if 95% of the time we are agreeing, it's not true that... But STX, that one. Even Chinese loan, what we disagreed about is coming true. Atwabo, fair enough. I think that it was a bit expensive because my indication is that it should have been 650. Okay, we, we are borrowing... 850 and spending our own resource of 150, so 1 billion. But now, what is happening now? The uh, Ghana gas is not being paid, so I, I worry. If Ghana gas cannot repay the loan, who is going to pay? And those things we, can, like, we should agree on. I think it, is, it makes common sense. Well, viewers, uh, we're going to go for a short break. We are in conversation with Dr. Anthony Akutu Osir, and we are talking about the Euro bond and how to revive the Ghanaian economy. When we come back, I'd like us to spend the dying moments of this, of this program uh, to look more about how we can take control of our resources and build a self-reliant national economy. Short break. <laughs> Welcome back to Hot Issues, and uh, we are in conversation with Dr. Anthony Akutuasa. We're looking at the Eurobond. 
Now, sir, we have rivers, brilliant human beings, diamond, gold, timber, all kinds of things. How do we take control of these resources and make these resources generate things for us? Yeah, it's a difficult question because of our history. We have not done it. Going forward, what do we do? I think this is where maybe if somebody talked to me about having a plan, I'll be in favor. But the plan is how do we recapture and optimize our own resource? I think this is where some serious thinking is required. We cannot rely on the market to do that for us. But we, we must define what is it we want. Um, can we stay on exporting raw materials forever? If you ask me, I said it won't take us anywhere. So the concept of value added comes in. And what does it require to take charge? We, I think we must make some conscious choices. In some cases, it may mean openly saying we are subsidizing this group for this purpose. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. The West has done it. American farmers can, are allowed to dump excess food into the sea just to keep the price. Why can't we do the same? But I think as a nation, maybe we spend too long arguing about what else are, uh, the colonialists did to us and not enough about so what. That is the past. The future, at least we are in charge, we can correct it. So I, I, I don't think we've done enough of that. And I think we need to be doing... That is where I, I would like to see more consensus. Mm. A Ghana vision. And, 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 and it is not easy in a multi-party democracy. But it doesn't mean that we should not try either. And I, that's my view. That I think that the excuses, 57 years, 58 years, I think is long enough to be always giving excuses. Uh, the market products markets are determined in, in Europe. and no, no, Nobody's buying that anymore. But it takes bold leaders to take us along. Mm -hmm. And maybe so far, we have not had that yet. Uh, but it is us Ghanaians that must put pressure on our, our leaders to take us to, to where we really want to go. Uh, I, I think it's time. The excuses... I think uh, nobody's buying it. I don't buy it. And I don't think any Ghanaian buys it. But we cannot live in this pretense mode that, oh, uh, maybe I'll be, it, it, it will not be. It will not be. You, you spoke about the need for planning. So in that sense, if somebody told me. But about I was going to find out whether it's an endorsement of the so called 40 year development plan. You want my honest opinion? Yes, honest you know, opinion. Just, uh, if we cannot implement a one year budget, what? gives us the impression that we can look 40 years down the line and do it. I think we should check ourselves. And people say the Chinese are doing it. The Chinese is not a multi-party democracy. It's a command economy. There are certain institutions that must be in place. So I, I, I think, you know, my honest opinion, Ghanaians, we like this feel-good matter. But feel-good will, will not get us. I mean, six, one-year budget... We cannot implement. And somebody thinks that 40 year plan can implement. I think it's, it's a hoax. So, how come everybody is endorsing it? Even from your political party? I, I'm, I'm, some party, some leaders of your party are endorsing it and they're embracing it. I, I don't know what private conversations they've had, but I'm sure that if you sat down deeply, people will begin to find. I think somehow Ghanaians have gotten to the point that they feel there's a need to have conversation to bring consensus. Whether or not they endorse it, I don't know. There's this thing that too much polarization, but maybe if we all move towards a plan, we might get some consensus. I don't think it's true. I, I know that. I mean, I mean, what? I, 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 I think it's okay if people want to feel good. I, I'm not going to follow that path. But you also spoke about a plan. I said, in the sense that mm -hmm. Ghana must decide what its priorities in the context of our current democratic state. What do we want to be? And we cannot leave the political parties to decide. If education and health is our priority, let us say so. Then when the government is spending all the money there, I won't have any problem. But we don't have such consensus. I, well, Republicans and Democrats will disagree, but when it comes to what 
uh, America wants, they, they agree. We don't have that type okay. of uh, 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 Ghanaian uh, vision. You know. For any plan, I mean, to be realistic and so on, the statistical base yes. ought to be solid. De definitely. What is your assessment of, of, of national statistics? Well, why are we... You know my is honest it, opinion? It honest opinion. For really a honest. long time, what I was used to some time back, is not the same. When you had the Omarbos and Dr. Abbe's, I think GSS was treated with reverence. Lately, some of the things I've seen, I'm not very happy. I don't know if politics has entered there, but that should not be. That should not be. Where so, so what are some of the things that you've seen? I mean, how can GSS put out data of growth rate and the Ministry of Finance comes and says, oh, this is our number. It should not happen. Ministry of Finance says... The budget a statement, there's a Ministry of Finance estimate and a GSS estimate of GDP growth rate. That should not be. Two Bank of estimates? Ghana, two estimates in the budget, check. That should not happen. How is that possible? Where is the ministry getting its figures from? That is the question you have to ask. They met with the IMF, and the IMF disagreed with the GSS data. So they agreed that they will bring it down. That is the problem. But if our statistics are unreliable, and how can you develop any plan? Well, th that should, that's part of the problem. The database upon which we, we make projections should be first class. And that one, we should not disagree. That's the, the starting point. But if we start disagreeing, I mean, when the, we see Bank of Ghana data that says that they have absorbed the government's euro bond, and the Ministry of Finance comes and says, no, it is not true, we have a problem. We should not have a problem there. And so the basis of our formulation of the plan cannot be suspect. And I think if GSS is the statutory body that must do it, let us resource them so that we don't doubt their accuracy. So that all of us depend on that. We must all. We can't have a Ministry of Finance and GSS estimate and uh, Akoto estimate. It cannot work. It cannot. Methodologies may differ. But when we come out, I mean, population, we should not be doubting ourselves. If it's 2.5% growth rate, fine. But that's the institution that statutory is charged with. Let us accept it. If we think that they need capacity, uh, let us build their capacity. Let us not politicize it so that now some of them may feel that, oh, we have to meet some political objective. It, it will help us. Because sooner than later, it will show up. It will crash. And it is true, the GSS made a mistake in some computation. So the IMF was not wrong. But they've corrected it. But Minister of Finance should not have come back and said, this is our estimate. You said, look, go back and do the correction and we'll wait for you. Mm -hmm. That's what they should have done. Now, sir, um, as briefly as possible, how does the future look like? The future of Ghana. I mean, we are not maximizing our returns on our For resources. For now, as a Ghanaian, so. not good. I, I, I worry a lot. You and I uh, are the age where, uh, I mean, we can, as it were, survive. But can the majority of Ghanaians survive? That's my worry. Because poverty is real. And if I, I, I know what I'm going through now in terms of demands, it looks like we are getting worse. And this is not from sometimes what you perceive as poor people. Even relatively affluent people are struggling. That cannot be the path that we want to go. Well, thank you very much, thank sir. You. Thank, thank you, you for coming to the studio. Thank you. Well, we've been listening to Dr. Anthony Akoto Osei. Uh, former Minister of State responsible for finance, uh, currently the ranking member uh, on, 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 on finance and so on. And you've heard it all. I do hope that through this conversation we've managed to, to shed light on the euro bond and what its implications are and so on. Um, we always say, and it is true, that the best comes from this station, TV3.